Bryson Leffers, a star athlete, fun guy, and beloved son, whose life changed in the blink of an eye. This is the story of fighting when it feels so easy to give up, the story of making the most out of a bad circumstance. This is Bryson's Battle. An undisturbed home in Fort Wayne, Indiana, home to a family of five and a boy who seemed healthy on the outside, but had no idea of the cancer taking over inside. I was waking up like sweating. I didn't really think much of it. I just thought it was hot or something. You don't think cancer is what's gonna be you sweating in the middle of the night. Leading up to his diagnosis, there was honestly no signs for us. He later told us like he would wake up sweating um, in the middle of the night, which can be a sign. But the first symptom we we saw was when he was struggling at his um, first track meet. At the boys' first outdoor track meet of the season, Bryson's parents recall a noticeable struggle in his performance. The star runner was struggling to compete in a meet that a few months earlier would have been a breeze. However, nothing extreme was expected. The cause was thought to most likely just be asthma. We came back the next week, we ran a workout, and he only got through maybe half of it, two of the four. And just like, I can't, I just can't breathe, I can't catch my breath. So then we suggested, I'm like, you know, you really might want to go, you know, get some x-rays, see a doctor, and explore this a little further, because what he was explaining to me didn't even sound like asthma anymore at that point. Obviously, the asthma wasn't the diagnosis, and we played with that for a few days. Um, I think we went to the doctor on a Monday when we got the exercise-induced asthma um, diagnosis, and then by Thursday, he was significantly worse. The doctor on a whim asked if he had ever had a fever the last few weeks, and he maybe had like a low grade, like 99, so that she took that as a fever and ordered an x-ray based off of that, thinking it was um, then pneumonia. After fighting through the weeks of increasingly worse symptoms, Bryson and his family decided to bring him to the doctor's office. Bryson's physical state was not at its best, but no one was prepared for the news he would soon find out. My initial reaction, because I got the phone call from the doctor, um, was just, I knew it, I knew that's what the diagnosis was in my, in my heart, but actually hearing it, um, I freaked. <laughs> And then I kind of got it together because me freaking out scared him. And um, I, didn't, I didn't want that for him. He didn't need that for me. And then uh, I just tried to uh, calm her down a little bit at first. And uh, as soon as the CT scan came back, they said, you need to head to Riley immediately. So <laughs> kind of changed plans right on uh, the spot there. After a near-death experience with Bryson's airway closing, the doctors finally discovered Bryson's diagnosis. Bryson had stage 3 T-cell lymphoblastic lymphoma. Although his mom felt she knew the diagnosis would be cancer, Bryson and his peers did not, and were certainly not ready for the news. Your mom said in the back of her mind she thought it was cancer. Before you got the official ruling that it was cancer, did you think that that's what it could have been? No. I mean, I'm... I was, at the time I was 15, played sports all the time, just got done playing basketball. We were running track now. I, what 15 year old thinks they're gonna get cancer? What was your reaction when you found out? I was shocked. I mean, I started crying, obviously. I was more, I was more in disbelief. I was like, what does that mean? What's gonna happen now? What's, where do I go from there? I think my reaction was pretty similar to almost everybody's. It like didn't feel real at first. Um, it was so surprising that something like that would happen to somebody that I was so close to. And when I put myself in his shoes, I was thinking about what he must be going through, and it was like it was a lot to process at first. It was tough. Uh, so when I actually heard the news, it was over spring break. I was actually going with my dad and my two boys. We were going on a fishing trip down to Alabama. And it was tough because it, it I've, I've been through this before. I had a teammate in college um, that had passed away at 23 um, from melanoma. And so hearing this again, it just brought back a lot of um, 
memories. Following his diagnosis, Bryson was brought down to Riley Hospital in Indianapolis and was almost immediately sent into surgery. The tumor had almost completely blocked his airways, leaving only 0.2 centimeters of space left for him to breathe. That first night, like he's talking about, was probably the most gut-wrenching um, because you're essentially sending your child in for a procedure that he needs to do in order to save his life, but it could also kill him too. Um, he literally had no airway left at this point. Bryson stayed at Riley for two weeks getting treatment every day as well as beginning his chemotherapy. When he came back home, he expectingly felt horrible and was barely able to leave the couch. We were, I had to go to the, do a grocery pickup or something um, and he just wanted to ride with me and we were gonna get Dairy Queen and he couldn't even make it in the grocery. Like he just laid there and cause he just felt awful. When I got home, like I slept in my bed a couple times, but after that, once I got so weak, it was inconvenient for me to walk up the stairs. I think I slept on the couch for a couple months just with a fan, like I lived downstairs basically. Despite the grueling two weeks of treatment at Riley, Bryson's personality and attitude remained unfazed as he received support from all over. At first, when I was in the hospital at Riley for those first few weeks, I was still me. Like, I hadn't lost my hair yet. I mean, I had all those scary procedures and those were hard and everything, but I had a lot of support and I was just, didn't really grasp what was happening yet. I didn't realize what life would be like when I had to go home. The medicine and treatments Bryson endured took a toll on his physical appearances. His hair was gone, his body and face were changing. Through all this change, Bryson had to fight to get past everything he was going through on the outside and focus on just getting better. I remember when his hair started falling out, I think that is what really did it for him and where he really struggled at first. Then he started to get um, puffy cheeks from the steroids and he didn't have that great jawline anymore. It wasn't, it wasn't just my hair though. Um, Waking up every morning by yourself, watching your body shape shift. Like, I was athletic. I had a pretty solid body. I was fine with how I looked. It was hard. I watched my body like completely shift. I lost so much weight that I, like, it just looked ridiculous. And then I gained all of my weight back plus an extreme amount more. And then my face puffed up. It was just hard to look at myself. Like, I really, I just couldn't. I didn't want to look at myself. Looking at myself made me cry. It wasn't just the physical changes that got to Bryson. It was also the loneliness and the thought that there was nothing he could do to stop himself from feeling the way he was. I'll be honest, I was very depressed. Like, there were some days I really just didn't want to live, and that's just me being honest. Like, cancer's hard. It makes you feel that way. So it's a very lonesome diagnosis. I mean, we're living it with him, but we don't know what it's like for him. COVID and everything, you know, it was even more isolating. Mm -hmm. Just having to basically be forced to be solo for a long period of time, several, several months. It, like Jessica said, it can be very lonesome. Bryson tried going back to school in person for the first time since his diagnosis. At this point, he was a completely different person physically and almost impossible to recognize for those who hadn't seen him in a year. Last year coming back to school, that was hard. That made me nervous. Wore a hat, was bald, didn't look like me. People were like, oh, that's Bryson, or people didn't recognize me. Some of your closest friends not being able to recognize you is like, it makes, I don't know, it just drops, it's just like shocking, I don't know. Despite all of the negative things going on at the time, Bryson was able to find a reason and something to work towards, that being the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. His friend, Colin Berta, took on the role of being his sponsor. So the Leukemia and the Lymphoma Society is a nationwide organization that obviously works to try to cure blood cancer. They specifically work with leukemia and lymphoma. The section that I was a part of was called the Students of the Year program. There's these programs all over the country, and I was specifically a part of the Northeast Indiana Students of the Year program. My role when it came to that was raising money through a campaign that all the money that I raised goes to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, but it all collectively was in honor of Bryson, and that's how I was able to raise that money. So did he nominate you? So Bryson himself didn't nominate me, but 
people that I know that work for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, they nominated me, and then I chose to run my campaign in honor of Bryson. Colin spent months reaching out and contacting people to get donations in Bryson's name. What surprised him was just how many people were touched by the story of Bryson Leffers. We would do a lot of personal asks. We would send out a lot of emails that had links to my website that I created, and it kind of told the entire story of Bryson, told the, what he went through, how that affected him, and it touched a lot of people. And the amount of support that we got was incredible. Like, it was so surprising, the people who I haven't talked to in years that would donate, and the kind words that they left for Bryson and for me and my entire team. It was super, super heartwarming. What, how much money did you guys end up raising? We raised $72,000. Was that a huge success? That was more than, my original goal was 50000 so it was a lot more than what we had been trying to do. After the success of Collins' campaign last year, both he and Bryson returned to LLS to become board members of the Northeast Indiana District with Bryson as the honored hero. I'm the honored hero this year, so I'm using my story to spread awareness for blood cancers. I'm helping with whatever Bryson needs with him being the honored hero. So like he has an upcoming um, meeting where he has to go meet the candidates now, so we'll go and support him and whatever he wants. Bryce and I are also on the board for the leadership program and we have a lot of friends that are involved with it and it's really cool how Bryson's story has inspired so many people to try to help fight cancer and specifically leukemia and lymphoma. Along with LLS, Bryson found more success in the community by receiving the Don Beebe Strong Award for his perseverance in athletics considering his situation. The award Bryson won in February was the Don Beebe Strong Award um, through Spies. Don Beebe had died of cancer um, shortly before that. Through it all, he kept, kept his love of sports to and keep himself and pushing stuff, yeah. through. And uh, Bryson really took that to heart for quite a while and was really pushing himself to try and get back in shape, even through all of his uh, mm -hmm. treatment, yeah. to try and hopefully get back into sports once he was more physically able to do mm -hmm. so. I got a chance to personally interview Bryson and dig a little deeper into how his love for sports has been affected during his journey. Bryson, we're back here, kind of where it all started, where you had your first symptoms. What kind of memories, just being back on this track, what memories do you have of just going through it, starting to feel sick every single time you ran? It kind of just progressively got worse as I was running. Um, each practice, it was getting harder and harder to breathe. I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, maybe I'm out of shape, but I just got done playing a whole season of basketball, so it was a little weird. As a result of Bryson's surgery and chemotherapy, he developed osteonecrosis in all of his major joints, which ceased his ability to compete in all athletics, especially running. It really sucks, to be honest. Like, I still have trouble with it to this day. Like, I honestly, I cry about it sometimes. Like, it just sucks not being able to do the things that you love. What can you say about the relationship you built with Coach Wilson? Oh, I love Coach Wilson so much. Um, even in Woodside, I would always talk to him about cross country. I'd be like, ask him a million questions. Be like, I was watching this video, blah, 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 trying to learn different things, just how to get better. But Coach Wilson has been there for me a lot. He's always texting me, checking up on me, especially at the beginning of my treatment. He was always trying to check up on me and he came to visit me a few times. I, I just have so much love for Coach Wilson. He's a really good person. First time I met him was in the halls of Woodside. Um, I had just switched and started teaching at Woodside uh, that year, and uh, he's kind of a goofball, uh, but in, in a good way. He's just, you know, a lot of positive energy. About one year after his diagnosis, Coach Wilson accompanied Bryson on his first run since treatment. Bryson struggled to run anywhere close to what he used to, but with Coach Wilson by his side, he was able to get back out there. It was a lot of fun. Uh, took a picture of it, you know, a selfie of me and him, and, uh, it, you know, just his smile, it, you know, in that moment. And just, you know, looking back at that picture and in that moment, just seeing how happy he he was and is. I'm not as worried about him and what he's going through. He's just the kind of kid that will persevere and, and fight hard with anything and you know just keep that energy that he's had and that great optimistic outlook on life. Um, and, and it just 
really more than anything, it kind of helped uh, it put me at ease a little bit uh, about him moving forward and that he's going to be okay and just going to be Bryson. Bryson's hard battle with cancer taught him to keep fighting and that life is fragile. Through all the treatments and surgeries, he had changed for the better and people all throughout the community have noticed. He wants to just go out there and, and do things. Like at one point he said, um, I'm I've been given the second chance and I feel like it would be almost a slap in the face for those that supported me to not take advantage of it. Same goofball, but uh, he is a little bit more mature. You know, I, I think with, you know, what he's going through, um, I think he understands, you know, life is delicate and it's not something to take for granted. I think overall it's just, it's such an incredible story of how he was his entire life was turned around, and now if you look at how good he's doing now, obviously he has a wonderful group of friends, his grades are doing well, he's getting involved. Um, it's just an incredible story of how everything changed from him oh, seemingly overnight and how he's able to come back from that. He's also helped me realize that things don't really matter as much. You gotta just you know live in the moment and not stress about things that in the end don't have as big of an impact as you think. Bryson's parents would like to give a special thanks to all the nurses and doctors at Riley's Hospital that supported their son in a time of need. A special thanks to the, the nurses and doctors. That were a huge support for Bryson. God gives or the world gives the hardest battles to the strongest people and so it's like why not me why would it be someone else rather than me if the world thinks I'm strong enough to handle it why well, I'm gonna give it my best and keep going <laughs>